Welcome to your virtual CFO coach. I'm your host, Leah Torbert, founder and CEO of Harrington Strategic Partners. I've spent my entire career working in the startup world, scaling businesses to multi seven and eight figures. I built this podcast to share all of that knowledge with you and make your path to success shorter and easier. Tune in each week as I cover topics, including financial analysis, cash flow management, holistic strategy, mindset, and more. Now for today's episode. Hello, ladies, and welcome to the show. Today's subject is very near and dear to my heart, taking out the garbage and cleaning up your data. I have spent my entire career in small business, and I've seen some pretty scary stuff when it comes to data quality. At one company, I found almost $100,000 that they had paid to vendors for products that had never even been received, all because they never reviewed open purchase orders. At another company, I saw delays of two to four weeks in sending invoices to customers because paperwork couldn't be located to verify the weights of products shipped. Many of these invoices were over $50,000 each, and to make it worse, their customers typically paid 30 days late. I've seen inventory count discrepancies of over $250,000 in a single month because data wasn't entered into the system correctly. These kinds of mistakes can bankrupt a business, and yet they happen every day. Even on a smaller scale, data mistakes can cost tens of thousands of dollars over time. But if it's so costly, why does it happen? In my experience, there are three main issues that lead to situations like this. Number one, the company is growing too fast to keep up with much needed systems and process improvements. So picture this. Your sales are increasing quarter over quarter, sometimes doubling or even tripling. Business is booming. It's all you can do to get the orders out the door and fulfill your service obligations. Sounds great, right? Operating at or above capacity takes a toll on you, your team, and your systems. You can manage it for a short period of time, but if this becomes the norm, your business will break. Paperwork will get lost. Customer requests will go unanswered. Invoices will be issued late, your operations will fall behind, and data will be the first thing to suffer in the name of fulfilling the order. So number two, data quality is underappreciated. It's considered a clerical issue, and it can be fixed at some later date. This is typically a symptom of growing too fast, but I have seen owners who truly believe data is an afterthought. You may have heard the phrase, sales cures all. You'll hear this touted as the answer many times when a company is struggling. Just sell more and everything will magically be okay. There'll be plenty of cash flow to hire someone to deal with the data and get it all wrapped up nice and pretty. But just selling more can actually make it worse, putting your back office even more behind and taking longer to collect on orders. And the third thing that I see is a lack of experience in the management team. Small business owners have a really bad habit of hiring their friends to come work with them or even their family members, even when those friends and family aren't the best fit for the job. They also like the hire cheap and train method to keep payroll costs down. This can be effective with your frontline employees, but your management team should have the experience doing what it is you want them to do. There's supposed to be a buffer between you and the day-to-day -day activities of the business. It's their job to recommend improvements, hire and train employees, and ensure that the company is meeting its goals. But if they're inexperienced, they may not know what to look for. To add to that, a lot of business owners are experts in their field, but they're not experts at running a business. And so if your hiring model is hire, cheap, and train, and you don't actually know what these positions should be doing and how those positions should be done, then it's also going to be really hard for you to train them to be effective at their roles. And so you're setting yourself up and your employees up for failure if you're not planning ahead from an experience perspective. So let's stop for a minute here and evaluate. Did any of these three points resonate with you? If so, that's okay. You've got a lot on your plate running a business, and it's hard to know every little thing to look out for and fix it before it becomes a major issue. The important thing is looking at your business objectively 
and deciding what you're going to do about it. So regardless of how you got here, you're having some data issues and you want to clean them up, right? So let's talk about how you do that. So the first thing I want you to do is to review your business by function and identify areas where your data is hurting you. So think of it as department. Think about it as marketing, sales, operations, accounting, administrative, logistics, all of these different things that your business has to do every day to get the sale, keep your customer happy, and collect on the order. I want you to talk to the people actually doing the work. If you have a team, they're going to be the ones that know more than you what's going on in the day-to-day -day workings of your business. Let them know that you want to make their jobs easier and you need feedback from them on what they think is working well and where the gremlins are hiding. They'll be more than happy to tell you, I promise. Ask your customers and vendors for feedback. They're a great source of information. Let them know that you're doing a review of your systems and processes and would appreciate their thoughts on what is working well and where you could make it easier for them to work with you. So the next step is to collect all of this feedback and look for recurring themes. Odds are you're going to hear some of the same things from different people. You're going to have communication issues, could have disorganized work areas, filing systems, inboxes, dashboards, etc. Missing information could be causing delays. You could have outdated or missing processes. Different people could be doing the same thing in different ways, and it's causing confusion and inconsistency in performance. So once you've collected all of your feedback and you've identified some recurring themes, the next step is to determine which items would make the most improvement for the company as a whole. In my experience, being able to find the information you need when you need it and having open communication between everyone involved in a process goes a long way to making an issue less painful while you're working on solving the larger structural pieces. The important thing here is to get a short-term win. Just like when you're building new habits, making a small improvement to a painful situation at work can make a huge difference in how people respond to further efforts. You're getting their buy-in for the longer process of fixing the big problem. So once you've determined how much impact you think each of these things is going to have, then you can prioritize your list from greatest impact to least impact. So based on impact, what do you think you should do first? Improve communication, get better visibility on projects or order status, hire a consultant, Take a look at your list and see what you think is going to make the biggest impact. And then you need to assess the time and cost to implement each one of these. It's not just the impact that you have to look at. Obviously, from a cash flow and profitability perspective, from looking at longevity and how the business is going to grow, you want to make sure that you're spending your resources appropriately. So this is also something very important to look at. You just need a rough estimate. It acts as a gut check to make sure that you're not taking on more than you can handle financially at one time, as well as keeping your current capacity in mind. If you need to hire someone to help you, include that in the estimate. And then finally, choose one project from the list to work on at a time. Now that you've analyzed your list by impact, by cost, and by time, you're ready to decide where you want to start. Choose one item. I can already hear the objections. I get them all the time. If we do these two or three at the same time, things will get better faster. We'll make more progress. Things will improve and everyone will be happy in a shorter period of time. But are you sure about that? There's a ripple effect that happens when you make changes in your business. What you change in sales affects operations and accounting and vice versa. Sometimes you can easily see where it's going to cause challenges and sometimes you can't. If you choose one thing at a time, you can make changes slowly. You're allowing time for the change to work its way through the organization, and you can make adjustments when conflicts come up to make sure that things are working smoothly before moving on to the next item. You may find that some of the issues on your list go away completely as you're fixing other things. You'll also ensure 
that you know for sure what fixed the problem. If you implement five things at once, how do you know what worked? How do you isolate the related issues as they come up? Take your time, track your results, adjust over time to increase efficiency, to increase cost savings, to get better results. And then when you're happy with the results, move on to the next item on your list. Process improvement is one area that I help my clients with. If you're interested in learning about my process, click on the link in the show notes and schedule a complimentary discovery call. I have a couple of spots left for one-on-one -on -one clients through the end of the year, and it's a perfect time to get started so that you can build a plan for how you're going to solve your challenges for 2023 and achieve your revenue goals. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please share with your network and leave a review so our podcast can reach more women and have a greater impact. If you have any comments or additional topics you'd like discussed on the show, let me know. Before you go, connect with me on LinkedIn and let's keep the conversation going.